watching this on video, PR Warrior, the podcast, if if I'm in your earbuds. Uh, my name is Trevor Young. I'm with Mark Masters, all the way from Bournemouth in southern England, and he's the founder of The ID Group. Mark Masters, welcome. Thank you for having me again. It's hey, a- we do well with these uh, we do. Uh, 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 chats. It's been a couple of years, though, since I think we last did it. So uh, certainly last time since we had a video chat. And uh, the good thing is this is really clear. And if I recall, the very first one wasn't so clear. So fingers crossed that uh, it's, it's, uh, oh, you've got a beautiful green background there. So, uh, but again, It's like a halo as well. Look at this. Like know, a, halo. a halo. Of course, if you're listening to this in, <laughs> in a podcast form, you're missing out. <laughs> Mark- that is phony M. <laughs> Night flight to Venus. Yeah, well, you've got some very nice um, vinyl records up on the wall there, Mark. And um, I read an article just the other day saying how vinyl is making a massive comeback. So there you go. You're no doubt helping sales of vinyl, but albeit you're not playing them on a record player, you're sticking them on the wall behind you. Mate, uh, <laughs> mate um, thanks for your time. I um, want to dig in. You're, you're, lots happening in your life. You're, you're uh, you know, content marketing and blogging and podcasting and speaking and writing books, but all of that, but it's all around the owned media mindset. And, um, you know, we've known each other for a couple of years. Um, you've been extremely active, very consistent. want to dig into it a, a bit today and find out, well, you started from scratch, and now, you know, it was only a couple of months ago that you were speaking in Cleveland in America at Content Marketing World, and you backed it up with a big conference in Brazil. You are a machine. Oh, that's better be good now. <laughs> All right, well, let's fire some questions at you. Uh, just tell us a little bit about the ID group, and because you've, yeah. uh, you know, you were a sort of a more of a design agency, but now you're pretty much 100 percent a content agency. Can you just walk us yeah, through that? Yeah, that's right. Um, I I'm traditionally from an agency background. I worked in London for years, so I am I am from that world where I want to interrupt you and and put myself in front of you with offers and, and, and promise you stuff of a product that is that, that is just kind of used in hot air and then a few years ago I, I, the, the reason things changed or the um the approach has started to move slightly was from reading a book i've already read uh, mentioned before the ultimate sales machine by a chap called and i forgot but the ultimate sales machine was really introduced was a really interesting book from 2007 and within the book started to talk about a concept called education marketing yeah yep so education marketing about this whole idea of of what we will talk about today of, of very eloquently about content marketing and using a way to inform people and to be more transparent and to be educational and, and challenge and inspire and i started to introduce that for customers whether that be pitch work that is personalized through to video that looks to tell a story, it was starting to see a result. So then I thought, right, let's kind of put this into practice a little bit more. However, the world still, much like yourself in Australia, the world is still driven via interrupting people and putting ourselves in, in front of others to tell us how good we are. And that's still the biggest challenge that we have, how we still move from a 21st, 20th century mindset to how we apply to stuff today because we still use digital channels as as more or less free advertising. So where the challenge is today is, okay, I had took everything that I knew and I wrote a book called The Content Revolution a couple of years ago. Yes! Do you like the way, though, that it took me about five minutes to mention, to plug a book? (laughs) (laughs) So so there was the, the, the book. And everything that I'm striving for now is to highlight to people how all this stuff works, but to talk about it, talk about it in an everyday way and associate it with brands that we that we can have a um, a kinship with. I like this word kinship because, for instance, in content marketing world, it was brilliant hearing about how Lego have embraced and adopted and made a content marketing approach work. 
But 99% of businesses do not have bottomless pits of money like the likes of Lego and Red Bull. And we hear some great stuff from Marriott and what they're doing. And they're doing more films and everything else now. But the majority of us are not at that stage. But how can we show... How can I show the validity and approach from people that makes sense so we can have the confidence uh, uh, to make this stuff work? And you've got a philosophy. Uh, our philosophies are quite aligned, actually. And, um, you know, when I read your blog, I'm, I find myself nodding. Um, not Great. nodding to sleep, Thanks. but uh, nodding in agreement. Um, why don't you walk us through the owned media mindset and and how that works, and then we'll get into the, the tactics. But I think, you know, again, having that, a perspective, a point of view, standing for something, a flag in the ground, I call it. You talk about standing for something. Um, walk us through what, what your flag in the ground is and, yeah. and and why is that important? Yeah, I only last week was my five years of blogging. Mm-hmm. And, I was, and I said right from the answer, you know, someone like yourself, how many, you've been doing it a lot, lot longer. How many years have you? Uh, Ten this year. See, right. So I've been doing it for five but I've been writing every week for five years. Mm-hmm. And what I was trying to highlight we, was that we have to start off not very good to become more comfortable. For instance, I would talk about very generic articles that we can read elsewhere. Okay, listicles are still very well read, but there was no point of view. There was no voice and so over the years, I started to, to create a voice where the whole focus is now on ownership. So I always talk about one word that we believe in or what we stand for. So my thing is to look at this whole theme of ownership, but bring it into today's world. Look at the way, but bring in stuff that's relevant to all of us. Yeah, because I was, I was looking through and, and rather than being rubbish stuff like how to do a good presentation and how what does, what's the difference between branding and marketing and all this generic stuff that is just noise and just not compelling, you know, we can now talk about and comment on the likes of Pokemon Go from last July. You know, over here, what Brexit means and, and the kind of approach to that and all these, because that's what helps us associate with somebody else is that point of view. But in a world of fake news and everything else, as long as we can back this stuff up, and I always talk about if we can talk from experience, it is backed up via data, and then also a bit of opinion, that's what sets us aside. Because here's the thing, you know, all our voices, our voices uh, are all unique in their own way. So let's find a way how we uh, uh, um, make how we present that to the rest of the world, and that's what the own media mindset is all about: is how people can take on board, uh, take on board with a point of view, and deliver it on a consistent basis that people think, ah, that's kind of interesting. I'm I'm on board. I'm on board that, and that's how we build an audience without necessarily relying on, on forcing everything onto Google or Facebook just to get somebody clicking and liking our our subscribe page. And so it is also about building an audience, but um, another another sort of, I guess, pillar of what you're on about is also sharing your learnings and your journey as you go. That's right, and there's nothing wrong in that because the you know a, a question that somebody's listening may by saying you know why are you sharing all this stuff when you when somebody else can take that, and that's totally fine. You know, as I've always said, all this stuff has already been said, but no one has put your interpretation to it that's right and so that's why it's that's why you know i think again that's why we are a lot of us are stuck in this world where we think if we open up and we are explaining how things work or the way that we look at the world or look at what's broken we may be seen as being a little bit silly because we haven't done it before yeah. you know and i still think it's something that makes us feel slightly uncomfortable do you do you see that i, I just think that sometimes yeah. we, we we we're a little bit sometimes we are a bit too guarded i think we i think we are i think um i think in australia that's been a cultural thing but i think we're we're loosening up as a result of putting ourselves out there um i think culturally americans are more adept at putting themselves out there um, I know earlier days that it was really hard to get people to, to consider doing that, business people. Uh, but now you see them on LinkedIn and they're having, you know, having a voice, etc. Um, I, I think, but then when it comes to 
um, this is a mistake we made and um, this is what we learned from it or you know this video or whatever isn't a hundred percent perfect I'm not going to let it out um, that's still very ingrained and that's that's business and that's professional I'm doing that in air quotes yeah and um, you know it's not it's it, it, what happens is that people start sounding like everyone else because um, your unique voice is your unique take on things and, and the lessons you've learned from something and um, you know, it doesn't mean that every article has to, well, I stuffed this up and, you know, I've, uh, yeah. I've, I've learned from it uh, because, you know, it, you just don't need to do that all the time. But I remember writing one article on LinkedIn and it resonated very quickly. And then it was just how, you know, I went from a, a nervous wreck to becoming a professional speaker and, and the things that I had to do to get over nerves of, um, you know, being on the stage and speaking. And people resonate with that because a lot of people are in that boat and, and that's how you... Um, I guess, connect with people emotionally through those stories and lessons and experiences and all of that sort of stuff. Because I guess a big word, you know, that, that comes across there you're talking about is honesty yeah. uh, and just by being upfront. But but I understand that it takes time to get to that because here, here's where we all are. We, you know, we're all drummed into us to be storytellers and to all, but to many of us, you know, we're, we're a long way away from getting to this point of becoming storytellers. You know, when let's take that step back a bit and to become a little bit more honest and, and share an approach with how we see see the world because yeah. that's how we build momentum and that's how we build confidence in, in, what, in what we do. That's the way, you know, the way I look anyhow. And I think for having a voice is, is really what it is because I, I only recently looked back at my very first blog posts and they're absolute shockers. And, uh, but I'll leave them up there because that's the evolution. Um, and Really important. And, yeah, and, and you know, I think so many, I've heard of so many companies, a number of companies, um, that of taking down old stuff because, you know, it's not relevant anymore or, you know, it looks terrible or whatever. But I think it actually shows this is where we've come from. And, and um, you know, unless it's completely and utterly out of date and, and it's incorrect, um, then I think that sort of stuff should be left up there. And so it's a big, it's a big picture stuff, isn't it? I mean, it's about authenticity, transparency, all of that sort of stuff. So let's dig in because I want to take people through how you've done it. So the blog was the first thing for you, but uh, how long were you blogging before you came up with the idea? You uh, started a series called Talking Content, which is still going, isn't it? Yep, still yep. going, still going. And you were number two, my friend. number two. Gosh, and uh, how many are you up to now? I think it's about 100. Wow. It's about, yeah, around about 100. So it started two, it started... 2013. So is it every... It started in 2013. So the idea... Every month? Every three it, months? I, I, it, listen, it's... it's yeah, it, it's quietened down slightly over the past um, couple of months. But the reason I, I did it... Right, so, so if this is kind of practical advice. So we should it's say what the, it is, actually. It's a Q&A. Mar- it's a Q&A with people who are involved in content marketing around the world. Yeah, yes. and it's six questions. So it's six que- and it's six questions that that ask that ask people on a particular topic. Because go, let's go back a couple of years ago, when you know I'm still fascinated by this subject and how we all tick and how we all work and how we all work and how we build audience. So going back, I wanted to go to the influencers, including you, Trevor Young. <laughs> I wanted to go to the influencers all around the world, authors, speakers, everything else, and to understand what all this means. Yeah. So 2013. So let's look at it this way. So I'd be blogging for a year so people could see what I was talking about. So social proof. And then I, so I had put, so my little breadcrumbs were, were dotted about. And so I was then approaching and I went for the jugular straight away and I went for the moment Trevor Young come on board was a moment to treasure. <laughs> so I thought, let's go around the movers and shakers within marketing today. So from everyone from your Joe Pulitzi to Mitch Joel to Jay Bear, Robert Rose, all the great and the good of marketing today. You say from Australia, yourself, um, we Jonathan Crossfield. And the likes of Bernadette Jiwa and also 
ah, oh, what's her? Who's the really good person? She was from Winchester down here. On, and I've got a name of her company, but it will come into my head. So anyhow, so I could build um, case studies or, or people explaining how everything works. Six yes. questions. But fast forward, and this is the interesting bit. So I wrote an article last year. It was all related to influencer marketing. So I asked, including yourself, why did you do? Why did you do this? When I started this, I was, you know, no, I was nobody knew who I was. Or, or nobody knew, you know, who, who who was I to interrupt somebody's inbox? And the answer was, you asked. Mm-hmm. It was I asked, and I did it in the right way. Yep. Rather than a cut and paste, yep. dear sir, as an influencer within the field of marketing today, you would you will be interested in participating in this project. I understood a little about, about each person, the stuff that they specialize in, and then we took it from there. And did a personalized, Hence, a personalized email. Email that never been promoted and everything else that goes with it. But it was just comes back to my own inquisitive nature. But that's the same for all of us. The marketplaces that we are part of, there's nothing stopping us looking at all these people that were within our sphere of influence and get them on board. I guess, you know, I did it to... to um, one, give me an idea of how the world is shaping within a particular discipline. And two, association with somebody else. Oh. And, and, and that was it. And it and it's grown. It's probably slowed down a little bit more, just busier how other things have become. But, it, you know, it's still somebody that's recognized and the people that participated, you know, are used within the book. And it, again, it comes back to this whole thing of evergreen content and how and, and how we repurpose all this stuff yeah. that we collate. that has got yeah. value that, that has ongoing value beyond the week it's published. So you've been you're blogging for a year. You embark on this talking content interview series. So it's a good lesson for people that you theme something. I call it, um, you know, like a recurring con- sub branded recurring content property because it kind of runs its own becomes its own thing Um, and then you turn that into a free pdf downloadable ebook yeah that's right so brilliantly i i used um slideshare so um designed um just a really simple 40 50 page pdf that took a sentence from each of the um participants and a photo of them, make it look presentable on the page, put it out there. It, it went it was what it was one of the slide shares of the week on on SlideShare. And yeah, I used it. And again, it was a way of attracting audience to the um, project because then it enabled people to sign up. And every time that when there's a next uh, interview released or to put them on part of my weekly email that I do, because it is you wanted people to see it was it was more than just one thing, a, you know, a bit like from yourselves, from the writing and the podcast. It was just trying out again, trying out new things that fitted the overall ethos um, an approach that you believe in, and yeah, it, it's still going strong. Again, we have, and it's the whole long-term thing, isn't it? You don't expect to return from it, but people could see what I was doing, so I just went for the big boys straight away. But there's still people out there doing really good work, and let's just highlight that. And it's still working cool. for you. And uh, so, talk about email. Then, at what point did you start, you know, going down the? I need to build an email list so I can communicate uh, more. You know more personally with people and you know really segment the people who are really interested in your content and from hearing from you on a day-to-day basis yeah. so this is this is the this is probably the best thing that i've ever done so by writing every week and it was three years ago and was it two years ago and it? it was two years ago i started to send an email out relentlessly every thursday called you are the media And it was over the years, it is now this approach that I make an appointment with somebody so they know they're going to get an email at nine in the morning UK time and you'll be getting it at at five o'clock, I think. Uh, five, uh, eight six. in the evening. Oh, like there you go. So at the end of the day where you are. So I I look to build. That was my thing to say to people to get an email every week related to ownership and over time, that has helped me build this subscribed audience because people know they're going to get something new 
each week. Yeah. That is always the main article. And around that will start become other things such as the talking content interviews. And then what I started to do was to start to sell a little bit. Ooh, this little 80-20 rule. Oh. So then I thought, okay, there's nothing wrong in this now. Let me start to, to from the events and stuff that I've started to create. Let's start putting these in. Let's start drawing interest this way. And it yeah. does work because we're all busy, because I started to find a rhythm of trying to own a particular day, be it Thursday. So it wasn't sending out an email like every day, so I'm just bombarding people's inboxes. So I would send out once a week, and I've kept to it. And that has helped me build my audience that, I've have, to, that I have total ownership of, that I can control, and, when, and then over time, more people respond. So you can enter a conversation on email, and then what I started to do was then how, how I create this live thing that that, 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 we're, that we can come on to in a minute. But it's how you, again, you, you mentioned a big word here, how we evolve. And we have to change direction. And we have to move things around. And we have to put things in the right place. We may think that we're going on a path that works, but really it may not be. So we have to tinker about and change. But as long as it comes back to the thing that we truly believe in and stand for, then that's helped build these little this jigsaw that starts to come together that we start to have uh, start to understand that a little bit better. So we'll get onto the live events in a minute because live events are content as well. But um, you've how long have you been, you've got a podcast with Ian Ian Rhodes? That's right. So me and Ian. So we're gonna. So we we started that for two years two years ago, January twenty fifteen. We started marketing that again. Home, marketing homebrew. Books, podcasts, I like this one. So, yes, yeah, so we started the Marketing Homebrew in January 2015. Again, we started from zero. So we started off, again, with nobody there. There were people that knew our, uh, that knew what we did. So over time, we have built our audience that listened to the Marketing Homebrew. And we are just about to start year three, uh, uh, start year three shows, new format to stuff. But that has helped both of us in terms of... Because with a podcast, if you mess up, you can't go back in and delete it. And if I start start falling over my words and sounding like an absolute amateur, it doesn't create a good perception for those people that want to find out more about me. So I absolutely love this whole podcast medium. Even the new Audi A4s have 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 the whole CarPlay built in. So podcasts are kind of of are magnified within the new within the new Audis. And it's um it's just a brilliant medium medium. I love doing it. When you find your partner to do it with or the person that kind of gets it as well. It becomes such an enjoyable thing. I do it because it is just a way of talking to Ian for 30 minutes each week. And he's a really smart guy and I got a lot of time for him as well. And as you, much as I have for you, and you uh, you get on pretty well. It, it, you know, it comes across. It's uh, you know, it's it's a double header, I suppose. It's you know, you don't really interview people. You do you talk with each other, and um, but you know each other pretty well, and you sort of feed off each other's energy. So I, I really like it, and that that gives it a point of difference than a lot of others. Whether you know an interview like this or people just riffing into the mic solo. So. I think you know having that banter between two people works pretty well. So that's growing. That just continues to grow. It's got its own website. Again, that's a recurring sub-branded content property. Um, so you know we, we talk about the 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 day-to-day -day presence um, uh, content, which is everything that you're doing on your social channels and and uh, your blogging and that day-to-day -day stuff. And then you've got a couple of recurring sub-branded properties, which People might just check in on one of those and not worry about everything else, but it doesn't yeah. matter because you've got them every week because it's it's this consistent uh, consistent flow of, um, uh, well, in the case of the podcast, episodes every week. Um, so you're up to how many episodes? You're up to about 100. So, yeah, so we're 100 and up coming to 120, 130. But, again, it takes time. And, you know, where we are, we are thrust in these in these spaces where we talk about influence and influences and stuff. So we're thrust in these spaces where we have, you know, I truly believe that we have to seriously entertain. Mm. And I don't mean trying to think that we're funny to people and we're not. And we just come across as and we just come across as dull middle aged men. But you do it in a way where you have a bit of soul and a bit of purpose. And when you talk and people know when your the voice is going up and when it's going down rather than just monotone drivel. Because, again, 
where we are today, we have we are, we have the spotlight is thrust upon us. So it's our responsibility if we're looking to soak up everything that's happening within our marketplaces and become a voice. You know, we've never had this before, have we? It's like now, you know, when this is live, when people can listen or they can watch. So we have to raise our game and be all these things that we've never been before. Mm. And I'm, you know, there was a book, but I'm not, you know, I don't consider myself a writer. You know, it's it's the it's the talking. We don't consider ourselves as presenters. All these things that that come naturally, which is why yeah. it takes time and training and 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 all the hard stuff that we got to invest because we cannot cut corners today. So. Building a platform that you've done, you've done it slowly, steadily, consistently over time. You found your voice. Uh, you've got your ethos, your philosophy, um, and that that comes across in in all the different types of mediums and channels that you use. Tell us about the book. Um, how how did that come about? And did that you know that it's through a publisher? Did the publisher approach you because they've seen you, heard you, subscribed to you, listened to you? whatever how did that come about no i where i was it come about because i wanted to basically put everything that i knew in a published medium at the time i thought i need to work with a publisher um, in terms of access in terms of things such as editorial in terms of creative create uh, creative output and also things like distribution uh, you know, my thinking of that has kind of is, is slightly changed over the past couple of years. But I wanted to be with a publisher because it had that kind of traditional gravitas to it. And I basically took everything that I knew and I just want and alongside the interviews that were just that were just powering, every, powering every week. And I just started to connect everything. And so it was a process that took me around 10 months. And again, you know, there, there may be somebody listening to this and I think, oh, blimey, he's talking a lot of it. This is a lot of stuff here. You're talking about you're doing emails and you're doing writing and you're doing interviews and the podcast and all this stuff. But when you become disciplined, you start to manage time. Yeah. And so I had the book. So it took us 10 months and done. It's out. And that, again, it's out there now. And it, it was published in summer 20, um, uh, 20, summer 2015, The Content Revolution. And yes, it, that is my marker. You know, whilst we talk about my center of gravity is the website, that is my piece where I want people to uh, uh this whole thing of trust yep. yeah and that's my thing that's cemented listen i see you recently you know we within your pr world and and very much probably the one thing that i pay attention to every year without fail as soon as it's re released is the edelman trust barometer yep. you know and we're just seeing it now let's just come out you know no matter from your side to my side within the government media and business it is just nose diving so how can we take the responsibility as businesses and individuals to become these torchbearers or whatever it is within our spaces to say that this, you know, this stuff is the this. If you want to come on board, if you think that it's just nonsense, that's fine. But how can you build people and you create this the, these web uh, uh, of this virtuous circle of touch points that people can, can know and understand that you're believable and you have a, a, a sense of purpose for what you believe in. And I keep on getting a bit fed up of talking about the whole purpose and everything else because Simon Sinek did it a few years ago with the whole, you know, start with why thing that's always bandied about still. But how can we truly have a, create a sense of direction and we start to carve these little places that people come to see us and interact with and we communicate and we do it in a two-way place. It just so happens that there are a number of places online and offline that people can, that I can communicate with people. And so you have built a, a global or continue to build a global audience, but you've also obviously got a very strong local, regional um, audience as well. Uh, why don't you walk us through that? Because you are now doing events in seeing meeting people in their protein yeah. form, um, what, what you, you you started off by having a seminar, wasn't it? Or it was called uh, Once Upon a Time, a storytelling. Yes, seminar. that's right. Yep. And that was a paid for gig. And now you've got the that's lunch. Right. You are the media lunch clubs as well. Are they the only two things you've got going? Right. Yeah. So what happened was related to the Thursday email. I was seeing that there are a number of subscribers from a local um, from a from a on a local scale. 
So I thought, okay, how do I make the most of this? Wouldn't it be lovely to bring those people that have a thing that ties them all together, be it an email once a week, a thing that ties everybody together, and I can do this consistently that ties in with the email. So I created a thing called You Are The Media Lunch Club. And it's the last Thursday of every month, and it is in different venues around my hometown of, of Paul and Bournemouth. And this will get together people that subscribe. And what I will do each month is share stories and an approach from different people that are taken on board a content marketing and an owned media approach, including last week, someone that you very kindly um, uh, uh, um, put the spotlight on last year, Farrow and Ball, a, la- a paint and wallpaper company from down here and their blog called The Chromologist. Fantastic, so Rob Murray, fantastic. head of digital content. Fantastic content. Well, it's an online and publication, it- isn't it? Mm. It's great. Again, it comes back to what I was saying, you know, when we talk about Lego and stuff that we can never associate with, let's find stuff that's happening within a local level of people without necessarily realizing. But again, it comes back to the premise of people that have have found a space and managed to build an audience around it. So there was a company called Crimson Guitars that have built a very large audience via YouTube, 70, 80,000 that they use to sell with what Farrah and Ball are doing to build an audience around the blog, which is all about owning color. And there's there's different instances of of, of people doing good stuff. So I'm focusing on the practitioner level and how it all works. We've got authors coming on board. Um, Sonia Jefferson, based in Bristol, wrote a brilliant book called Valuable Content Marketing. So I do that each month. And, and And the interesting thing is, there's more people over the months that are coming on board. But, but, when you talk about, you know, I had a, a thing called Once Upon a Time is in a theatre on the clifftops in Bournemouth. And I, we kind of stopped that now to focus on the things that tie back to what the business is all about. So the same for all of us. If we can do things that we test and, and, and but it's a lot. And I talk about this idea of the spark and the framework. And as long as this little spark and these ideas that we have we can still progress them as long as it ties in to the framework and the approach of our businesses, because it's really difficult. You know, it, you know, it's always there, isn't it? How we should be using live video and what Facebook are doing now, even what Facebook are doing now with uh, uh, audio and, and taking that route. All these things are dangled in front of us that are a fraction of the cost that they were a few years ago, but it doesn't mean it's right, does it? You know, and we could be doing live video but as long as it's not something that you're committed to it's never going to work so walk us through this now so you've been building your visibility i talk about the um the five vital signs of pr so visibility influence trust advocacy and leadership so you you tick all of those because you know the visibility was important early because no one knew who you were now people know who you are um Influence because you you are building influence because you're getting people to take action. You're impacting um, people's lives and they're taking action. So you're at your that's to get people to come to your events. It's to get the local newspaper to write about you and your events, which I've seen a, a number of articles there. Um, it's to get mm. uh, other influencers and and content marketing experts from around the world to take time out of their day to answer six questions for your talking content. That's influence. Uh, Trust, you just mentioned before about the trust barometer and how it's plummeting, but through all of these touch points, the authenticity of yourself, you you are the same in writing as you are uh, listening to a podcast as you are on this video. Um, So you you build that sense of trust around your personal brand. And uh, advocacy, uh, there's no doubt that people now are starting to uh, promote you, uh, promote your business, talk about you in, in glowing terms, my friend, glowing terms, and, and leadership. Thank you. Thank You're taking you. a leadership positioning by going to the front and, and having an opinion, a perspective, and, uh, and, and, and talking about it and bringing people along for the journey. So that's leadership. So the vi- you, you are ticking all the boxes of the five vital signs of PR. Does this lead... It works. To business, does your is your business better off today than what it was? Uh, I read somewhere where you, or maybe it was you've just said said it to me um, that you, you know, if you were, didn't start the blog and then that led to all of these other things, you'd be just another marketing agency. Correct. 
Yeah, yeah. In, this, in the long and short, because long and short of it, because somebody asked me this two weeks ago, and and yes, it does work. However, it does need a, a big invest. Look, the biggest investment is time in in all yeah. of this. But when you talk about customers, and this is the best thing for me, is that you can create better customers f- from this because they are along with you as well. Point being. Customers before, everything was driven via transactional, yeah? Yep. Do the project. There you go, guys. Here's your website, whatever. Can you pay your invoice? Track transactional. Now, customers feel part of something, yeah? Whether it's an email that they get or whether you say to them, look, I'll cover your lunch. You come, you, you, you come to this next week. So you start to build a much more relational approach. So that becomes a way that they can read they can listen, they can take all this stuff on board, so that helps promote a discussion, so you create, and I, this is my thing, you create better customers from it, rather than being, right, I just wanna do it this way, just, is now they will see things that, that are being created and, and, and ideas that stimulate a discussion, that just, and this is what it's all about at the end of the day is doing stuff that we enjoy and customers, when I say customers, customers that it, kind of, it works in terms of people that if we as a content agency, uh, 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 retainer base work based on how others can become more compelling and then how they can find their voice in a very kind of noisy marketplace. But it all comes back to it breeds familiarity yeah. and it creates deeper connection and deeper conversations. Which builds trust. And that's, Hundred percent, because this is the other thing from the from the Edelman, you know, report. And okay, trust is 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 diminishing, and we're in a really tough place. But that's good because that's how we become more more thicker skinned, and this constant state of disbelief is a good thing. So when something is good, it's it's magnified, and and but it, it has worked for me because I have created these as I said, this web of touch points for people to find out more. So when they approach, their mind is already made up rather than pitching for work and and, and, and trying to get on with people that, that, that are not familiar. Because then that puts me in the same with everybody else. That puts me in the place that I was where you become a brand agency that charges lots of money to do websites and whatever and brands and exercises where you are nothing compared to anybody. I stripped a lot back where the focus is now very much within how companies start to build a more compelling uh, argument for their business. And we just do it and we just do it in a different way. And that's the whole differentiation aspect. And on top of that is this, this investment and all these different content assets that sit in the big wide world, whether offline and online. And I suppose the thing there too is that by the time people get to you, they're already made their mind up. So you're not, as you say, you're not pitching, you're not competing on price. Um, and if people don't like um, the, your philosophy and don't agree with it, that's fantastic because you've filtered them out. Um, so I, I think that that's, that's kind of an unsung power of content marketing and, and social media and being out there and having you know, a thought leadership positioning in the marketplace is that it does help you pick the right clients and therefore you're going to do the best work. They're going to become advocates. Um, and, and that all works for you because, you know, as we know in the professional services uh, industry, it's, you know, if you don't like your customers and you're dealing with some hard people, um, it's not a lot of fun. So you, so you do make, you, make a quid through strategy. Um, you've got some obviously retainer based clients. So you help execute on these, on, on that strategy. And you've also do some, uh, of course, these training days, you've got a, a a strategy day I see coming up as well. So are they are they the main mix of how yeah. your business operates? Yeah, yeah. So I've I've cut a lot of stuff back over the past year. So the focus is very much is on three sides: is how you create strategy for people, how you then help people create and distribute and promote their content, and the other side is learning and education. For you know, for the small businesses that are there, and to give them a platform that gives them confidence and a momentum. Excellent, excellent. Um, so there's a lot of things covered there, and uh, I must say also that it led to speaking as well again, uh, because you had the book and the profile, and you made the connections, and you've mixed it up with the influences, and you built those relationships. So that's led to uh, speaking in gigs, which of course just enhances your position in the marketplace. I think we 
we, I, don't, I think you missed uh, an answer on the question on the book, if I can just go back for a tick. Uh, did, they, did the publisher come to you or did you pitch into them? No, I went to the publisher. You went to the publisher? I went to the, yeah, I went they to the publisher. They checked you out, um, they saw what you were doing and then they were on board? Yeah, that was it. That was it. Again, you know, where the, where I, when I started that in earnest back in 2014, yeah, there was, the, but they could see, yeah, there, there, there was ongoing stuff that was out there. There was a point of view. And so yeah, they, they, they took it on board, but it was me. Yeah, so it was me that approached them. And uh, yeah, in a conversation that grew to, yeah, the, into a, a book that I'm happy about and the physical manifestation that it takes on board. Yeah. Fantastic. So from a business perspective, with all the things that you do, and I know the power is in um, your own media assets, uh, what you do on social media about, you know, obviously distributing that content, but also to connect with people. Uh, I know you do that a lot. And then uh, obviously earned media, you're now starting to get a profile. People are coming to you um, and, you know, you earn the right for a conference organiser to, to ask you to speak. You earn the right for the local newspaper to, you know, to cover you, all of that sort of stuff. What's working, what are the top couple of things you know of that are working really well? Uh, if I have to throw the ROI question in, I'll, to I'll toss it in. Uh, what, what, but what do you think is working for you best at the moment? Okay. What's working for me is the email. The thing that works for me best is the email. If we're looking at the ROI and a thing that we, the work where there is return, it is, it is 100% the email because as I talk about, it collates my thinking and it helps me become disciplined because I have promised to people I'm going to be sending an email at a particular time during the week. And then the other thing is as well is that, yes, I, I'm not ashamed to say it, that you will use it to sell. And in a way where there are the uh, um, whether it's the lunch clubs or the higher ticket items, I will use that now as a platform to not go hell for leather on it, no. but show the reason the, the reason why it can help people. And if they have the time and it's available, look, just click here and find out more. So email to me if we're looking if you're trying to pick a platform, and I, I don't know that, that that writing and blogging has helped validate who I am and, and what what I believe in, but in terms of using a space that I have control of that I am consistent with it is email and I use uh, MailChimp <clears throat> and I use MailChimp to distribute every week and that works and it yep. does work. When I say it works, when they say ret the return, it works because people will <clears throat> reply and we can have a conversation Yep. and it works in terms of people thinking, ah, I, I'd, I'd like to go to that. And there were those little nudges there to say, right, click yep. here and I will tell you more about this event that's coming up. So it's a double, it's a, it's a two pronged attack, one to help sell and the other one to keep a conversation ongoing. And don't forget though, the, you needed the blog to get people incentive to, and you did, yeah. to, to, to subscribe and you need to fill the email with content which comes from the blog. So, <laughs> so your one-two punch is. really is the blog and... and um, the blog and the uh, email list and um, those two together. And I, I mean, obviously, uh, we haven't even got into social media and we, we're probably running out of time to do that. But, you know, you are, you're you pretty active on LinkedIn. You're pretty active on Twitter. Are they the main two? You, do, you, you are on Facebook as well. What Out of those three, which is the one that's probably doing it for you mostly? Um, yeah, it seems to be Twitter seems to be my uh, uh, space. Yep. And then I will use, for instance, with my the, the articles that I create within two weeks' time, I will repurpose them within LinkedIn. Yeah, so they're the main two that I use. I started to bring back in Facebook uh, for the company at the start of the year, just so I could use a bit of page. You know, a bit of a bit of outbound is okay for a bit of inbound. Do you know what I mean? So I started to use to to pay, but what I'm seeing at the moment is okay. It drives traffic to, to and views to pages, but it doesn't necessarily. Um, uh, uh, create people responding and signing up because I will look at it in a way to a lot of people these are strangers you know what I mean these are strangers that haven't come on board that haven't subscribed and that's the only downside to it yes it is, it is driven traffic but it hasn't necessarily driven people clicking a button to say right I am in and so with the email list you setting seeing steady growth is that what what are your metrics around email do you look at open rates do you do you look through click throughs um, yeah. What, what, what's yeah. you know? How's your yes. is your yes. average open rate going up? Is it a good rate? Are you happy with it? Is it improving? Uh, do you tweak yeah. all of those things? What's what's your secret? Yeah. There? What I what I what I what I started to see was that um, click throughs were 
were not as high as I was anticipating. So click through, so they had good open rates were good, but click throughs were not necessarily were around about. Let's let's have a look here. So so click throughs are around about eight percent, seven to eight. So what I started to do was to take to edit the main article each week mm -hmm. and to put that within the main piece. So when people open it on whatever device, it's there. Yeah, they haven't got a click, and I'm not going to trick somebody to to find out more. And here's the the top tips you're going to miss on. I do an edited version in the main piece that then then and, and then I will put the sub articles. It will always be three articles and a two and three, that it, whether it may be an event coming up or it may be the podcast or something else that I'm seeing that's out in the, it, uh, uh, in the big wide world will be a just a couple of paragraphs to invite people to click through more. But so what I'm seeing now is is that by by putting the main body into the article, edited down, average article is between 1,000 and 116,000 words. I will put around about four or 500 words into the email. That seems to be working in terms of now people interact, in, in terms of people reading that. Okay, excellent, excellent. Well, we've covered the, geez, probably makes you tired just <laughs> going through all the things that you uh, I know, that you a lot. do. I know, and, and you've got to do some work. Um, as now I'm going to work! Woohoo! Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, uh, as you say, it's about making it part of your day, having the, you know, the plan, knowing, you know, I don't know if you sort of sit down and write everything in your schedule. Some people do, some people don't. But you've, you, you seem to have your voice and your rhythm. Thank you, mate. I'll take that. Voice take and that. rhythm. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, thanks, Mark, for your time. Um, I'll give the book another plug. It's The Content Yay! Revolution. I think I might even crack a mention in here, something, which is very nice. And, <laughs> and, um, and where else can people find you? Because your business is called The ID Group and you're in Bournemouth. Yes, and you made me change my Twitter handle, didn't you? I put that all down to you. I did. I found <laughs> me very easily on Twitter at Marky Masters or on Instagram at Marky Masters. And yes, the company's theidgroup.co.uk. Yes. Uh, let's just cover that just before we go. You, you are now Marky M. Mark, i.e. Masters, whereas before it was, hey, the ID group or something, and I could never remember it. And Ian Rhodes, who's your partner in crime on the podcast, he ch I, I chipped you on, on Twitter and then he uh, chimed in as well and agreed that you should change it and you changed it and I reckon it's all the better for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. For your, thank you for your, for your, for your input. It's maybe a better, better shaped individual, yes. It's not a brand. An individual. That's oh, yeah. right. People follow people, not logos. All right. Thanks very much, Mark. Um, enjoy uh, the rest of the day because you're just uh, start of the day there, and uh, it's nearly bedtime for me. So uh, until next time, see you on the twitters. Sleep tight. <laughs> Thanks, mate.